Well, the NHL's trade deadline is always one of the more personal parts of a hockey season. No matter if you're on the winning side or the losing side of a season, there's always that high possibility of change, and such is the case for these Sharks players. They lost a good quarter of their dressing room across the last few days. It's definitely some new beginnings. You see the arrivals on the left of your screen, the departures on the right of your screen, and all of the draft picks that San Jose gave away but also got back in the process. There's just been a lot going on within the last 72 hours. And so it's a great time to check the current Brody Brazil and Mark Smith. We welcome in Alan Hoshida. And I guess we got to talk about the big topic here. Despite all of that, Tomas Hurdle still remains the centerpiece. Yeah, la on Thursday, we kind of tiptoed our way into the current, into our pool. Oh, yeah, that's We're right. two we're feet in already because yeah. we're going straight <laughs> into Tomas Hurdle, the big trade. Every year, there seems like there's a blockbuster trade. But I don't think many Sharks people or many fans or even around the NHL thought this was the deal that was going to shake up the trade deadline. Nobody saw this one coming, Smitty. Like, if you predicted this, you're lying. Oh, yeah. This was a, an absolute shocker right across the league. Uh, came right down to the wire. And obviously, uh, a long-term San Jose Sharks uh, player that uh, is going to be missed here in San Jose, going to the Vegas Knights just down the road. I like Edstrom. I like him coming back. I like the first-round selection. It's going to be a lower pick in the first round by Las Vegas, obviously. And obviously, San Jose also gave up a couple of picks. But there's a small-scale part of this, Alan. I think there's a bigger-scale part of this now versus the future. Yeah, he's already 30 years old. He's signed for another six years. So right. that's where you look at it. And the Sharks did retain a little bit of salary, 17%. Uh, but I think it sets them up salary cap-wise long-term, right, that, you know, Hurdle gets to go chase a cup, but also helps out the Sharks uh, as they go. Yeah, and I think that's a big point, uh, part of it, right, is freeing up that money, that capital to, to make some moves down the, down the stretch here. That's a big contract, obviously. The way that the Sharks are uh, kind of positioned right now uh, probably wants a little bit of liquid to, to make some moves down the road. I would also say that his extension was the last big move of the last era of Sharks hockey, right? right? So it's no surprise that what fit back then may not fit as much now or in the next couple seasons. It fits better in Las Vegas. By the way, they've got some salary cap things to figure out now. Adding Gymnastics. hurdles to an already very busy and expensive roster. I don't know how they're going to do it in the next couple of years. But we have to look back at number 48 because he came on and it was a lightning bolt when he got here. 19 years old, a teenager, and within, I say, three games, yeah. we kind of figured out who he was. But it, it all in that 2013 season, That's a great photo right this, here. this was kind of the trademark. Fun must be always. And it came from this tweet where Tomas was rehabbing and he made some friends. Oh, that's fantastic. And just the personnel. He uh, was not a married man yet. He didn't have kids yet. He wasn't uh, wearing a letter on his sweater. We, we saw all of that evolve when he got here. He was a, he was a kid. I yeah. mean, even facially, look at him. He, he had a kid's face. And, and now, I mean, he leaves here as a, a full-grown adult, an NHL all-star, and one of the better players in the NHL. So you just saw his first goal, and that was in his second game. He had two that night that's right that was a lot we thought oh good right the next <laughs> game out there right october 8 2013 against the new york rangers he did something that will go down as <laughs> one of the greatest moments in certainly sharks regular season history but also a pretty good moment in nhl history as well it was at least a hat trick right it was at least plus one yeah. and the fourth goal so oh, he came just... with the exclamation point he went between the legs when the hats came out that was good enough yes, but his did. next goal blew everybody away not done yet not done yet just an absolute Here it comes. beauty uh pulls this thing right back through the legs oh unbelievable to have that confidence at that point in your career i think the fans obviously fell in love with him that day look at that young smile right there just uh really gonna be, be he walks there. out there for his third star and then comes and sees brody right there uh-oh ladies and gentlemen tomas hurdle the questions your first NHL hat trick you're going to score four goals real simply what's going through your mind right now oh this is dream this is dream no reality I'm I'm having crazy and uh, I don't know and a big game and this is dream 
know what's crazy about that, guys, is we made the request to interview him after the game. How could you not? He just oh, scored four yeah. goals, and he didn't speak much English. We knew it. I said, Hertz, can we? He goes, no, 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 no. And Sharks PR said, oh, yes, yes, yes. So I tried to make the questions real simple and straightforward, but this is dream caught on pretty oh, fast. Uh, that's amazing. And obviously that was the first uh, glimpse at uh, character or the A lot and, of it, uh, yeah. personality that we've learned to, to come to love over the years, and just uh, he will be missed here in Teal. That rookie season, he was on a tear. He had 15 goals in 30-ish games. Right. He was in the Calder Trophy talk. Looks like the star was ascending. You're not going to show it. I think you're going to show it. I am you? because it's one of the oh, great. It's one of my great Smitty. sports questions that I ask myself. No. At, late at night when I'm laying there thinking, what happens if this play doesn't happen? Dustin Brown, you, you know what? Yeah. That uh, that was uh, obviously tragic. Uh, having such a good year right there. Um, and uh, that's painful to watch. We don't. Let's just let's just move on. I asked that, that because yeah. it shows his journey, yes. though. That's, yeah. I think that's a great point, Alan. Yeah. I think it. it he, he didn't have it easy. He, he had to crack a hard roster, like the Joe Thorntons, the Patrick Marlowe's, Logan Couture's of the world. He has to join that team, play well, and then go through stuff like that. And that was just the first year. And then as we kept building and building, he had moment after moment, and maybe none bigger than a double overtime winner. These moments, like he had every confidence in the world. Yeah, he said it, and we might hear that maybe later. Oh, oh, who knows? oh. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. But Oops. I, I think this season is a good representation of who he is. He's kind of grown as a leader. Yeah. Uh, we may not remember the season a lot for his time here right but I think he did a wonderful job of trying leading this group with the captain out and so I, I just want to point that out I think that was a really uh, solid thing that he did as a leader here and the Sharks did you know a classy thing by sending him off as well uh, with a tweet we're about to see uh, from the organization Aww. there is there's that baby face you said right I mean we all well, I, I feel like I look worse. He looks better <laughs> uh, in, in the 11 or 12 years. But, yeah, and then he had this statement, too, which, I mean, it's, you know, it's 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 going to crack a tear for a lot of people, I think, to read what he wrote here. And it's good to get it in his own words. And sometimes, like, in front of a camera, he may not feel comfortable enough to say all this. I love when somebody takes the time to write this. Out. Yeah, and you know, that's how he played. That's the kind of guy he was on and off the ice, uh, beloved by the fans, by his teammates. And, uh, I mean, just kind of shows the classiness of Tomas Hurdle, and obviously we wish him all the best uh, going to a team that uh, we have a little bit nah, of history nah, with nah, as well. Nah. So, uh, nah. But all things aside, we're going to uh, miss Tomas Hurdle here in San Jose. So we're going to wrap up Checking the Current with a little homage to oh. one of the great 48s, uh, maybe the greatest 48, certainly in Sharks history. Oh, there's <laughs> Keeter. Wow, that's good. Probably a good-looking picture there. <laughs> it's crazy. I forego. I, I never and and the uh, Czech league and never had trick and NHL is is crazy. <laughs> that's it. I think that was only eight. Can you can you smile? I was just fun game and, and now we you know we have one more game and come back for game seven and I believe it because we better team than them. Uh, it's a tough one, but sorry, Brody, but I will Come go. On. I will go with Carter. You got the beer. He looks a little meaner, so Batman, you you kind of like the nice guy.